Order! Order! You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! Tonight, a potentially game-changing moment, as you've been hearing, for pro-choice and gay campaigners in Northern Ireland, as Parliament voted by a landslide to legalise abortion and gay marriage. However, the legislation only comes into force if the Northern Ireland Assembly is not restored by the 21st of October. Even then, there'd have to be a further vote in the Commons, and even after that, a future Assembly could overturn the law. This is how the two votes fell. First, you're hearing the abortion decision. The eyes to the right, 332. The nose to the left, 99. The eyes to the right, 383. The nose to the left, 73. Well, Stella Creasy is the author of the amendment to extend abortion rights in Northern Ireland. She joins me now from Belfast, Liam Gibson from the Society for the Protection of Unborn Children. Um, Stella Creasy, tell us about the numbers. This was a free vote. Were you yes. surprised by how the numbers fell? Uh, I think when you're standing watching the minister who'd just been making the argument against your amendment walk through the door to support it, along with several senior members of the current cabinet you know that there's cross-party consensus that it is untenable that right now in northern ireland if you are raped and you become pregnant as a result and you seek a termination you could face a longer prison sentence than your attacker or if you become pregnant and sadly your baby has a fatal fetal abnormality and so is unlikely to live we would force you to continue to carry that baby to term rather than allow you to terminate it. I think today what you saw, also on same-sex marriage, and I must pay tribute to my colleague Conor McGinn, who did a fantastic job on this, was a recognition that there are some basic human rights and it is untenable that people in parts of the UK do not enjoy them, that it's not right that my constituents in Walthamstow would be able to make those choices themselves about what to do if they had a fatal fetal abnormality, but somebody living in Belfast would not. Uh, Liam Gibson, do you accept that Westminster MPs are having to step in because Northern Ireland has let its people down on this one when there is such support for both of these amendments? The most fundamental human right of all is the right to life, and that's the one that Stella is actually targeting. And she's very disingenuous talking about rape and fetal abnormality because we know that she votes for decriminalisation, which would strip uh, every unborn child regardless of, of the circumstances of the right to life and even she even supports removing the legislation that protects children whenever they've been born from being murdered because the, the, the section 60 of the infant uh, of the, the uh, but you, you'd accept uh, that the, the, the majority of people law. in Northern Ireland are themselves, that all the polls show that they support this, but they don't have the government to pass this legislation themselves. This now. is this is a, a debate that's been going on for decades in Northern Ireland, and every time the legislature has looked at it, it's rejected it. Even even the House of Commons rejected it in and 1990, and then again in 2008, it's been rejected every time. The polls really do not. We do not. We don't make laws according to uh, opinion so polls. This was a matter for the Stormont Assembly. Unfortunately, uh, the House of Commons has decided to override the, the devolution settlement <laughs> in an exercise of raw power. This is not... I, I think it was uh, nice to just raw, this is Sorry, this is just complete power. hokum. Just as with the outrageous and, frankly, slanderous suggestion that I would support aborting babies at term. Let's talk some detail. Let's talk some reality Stella, of what is actually you happening. Tell me no, Liam, just, just, just let Liam uh, just let let not, respond. You might not want women to have a choice over their bodies, but you won't silence women speaking out on this issue whether it's on telly or in real life. What happened today was a recognition. The Stormont Assembly hasn't sat for two years. The legislation we bring being forward to us today was essentially saying it's probably not going to sit for three years. Now, what we recognise, of course, everybody wants the Assembly back up and running. But that doesn't absolve us of our responsibilities to the thousand Stella, women who travelled last year from Northern Ireland, Ireland to have Ireland. an abortion in England and Wales. OK, so the, the, Liam's point and, and Nigel mm. Dodds is that it, it drives a coach and horses through it devolution. Doesn't. It absolutely doesn't, because if the Assembly is reconstituted, Stella, totally then untrue. both the amendments that were put forward today would fall. What it is saying is that human rights worthless. that are delayed are human rights that are denied. OK, let me <laughs> ask Liam, do you think, do, do you think, Liam, that this won't ever come to pass? The right to life. 
Do, do you think this won't ever come to pass? Do you think we will see Stormont up and running it's, by October? No, will this Storm be overturned? The, the chances of devolution now before the 21st of October are dead. There is absolutely no way that, so you that accept this Sinn Féin is, is going then? to uh, go back into an executive and lose what it's gained without having to even go into the House of Commons and, t and take its seats. You know, this, is, this demonstrates how little the House of Commons actually uh, is concerned with the, the opinions of the people of Northern Ireland. We're being ruled like a colony. Uh, devolution the is, is fundamental to the, the, the peace court, settlement here. And unfortunately, court, you've torn it up. Our own Supreme Court found that the situation in Northern Ireland constituted a violation of the human rights of women in Northern Ireland. Stella, the UN Committee on Torture. Dictator, that was, Liam, that was you keep opinion. trying to shout women down, but we are going to shout louder because uh, these are our human rights. If, and if what I want is the, the women in Northern Ireland have the like same team. human rights that I have as a woman who lives in England. Our uh, Supreme Court is rights. looking to the UK because it's UK legislation. It's a piece of legislation written in Westminster in 1861 that means that abortion is criminal. In Northern okay. Ireland. Let, let Liam respond to that uh, then. This is, this is a violation is not of human, human rights. rights. Abortion is not a human right. Yeah. The right to life is a human right. It's recognised in the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, the, 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 Charter, uh, the Declaration of Rights of the Child, the Convention on the Rights of the Child. Abortion does not appear in any instru uh, international instrument of human rights. Okay. Uh, that's that's yes, complete fiction. Uh, Stella's been very good at, at yeah. uh, getting that message out. But it's 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 complete fiction. It's false. We've run it's run out not of true. Time. Thank you both very much. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Happy.